Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to the 9th Summer 2025 update from Gauss Weatherly. So here we go again, time to bring you more summer data. We're up to update number 9 in our summer updates uh, now. And I shall get on with it for you in a moment. Just say that first, a video of sales, our 6 air UK weather forecast. I've got a 10 to 14 day video upload on the way later on today as well. Please like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much everyone for doing that for Gauss Weatherly. Thank you so much. Stop it. Show to Richard Ricardo. Show to Richard Shaw uh, for the summer updates here. Thank you so much, Rich. And thank you so much to Shry and Bruin for getting all of the years together for us for this update. Big update this week. Um, so uh, this is going to be an Enso update. So uh, you, I'll uh, get on that in a second. To say we are reaching the business end of our summer updates now. So we've got two more uh, penciled in. And then the summer forecast will be released on on Sunday the 1st of June, so we're getting ever closer now to uh, forecast release day for summer 2025, but still got a few more updates to go, including this one. Uh, so again, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much, hashtag TinGav, uh, Richard and Shryan. And uh, with that said, let's crack on, shall we? So this is going to be an ENSO update. This is for how the uh, Equatorial Pacific Ocean is currently uh, looking. Remember, ENSO is the cyclical warming and cooling of the Equatorial Pacific Ocean from Peru over here to Indonesia over there. And you see that uh, we, well, we had, of course, the uh, La Nina signature, but it was never designated as a La Nina, but we had a La Nina signature um, through the past winter. That has well and truly gone. Uh, it's reversed. And we are at Enso Neutral right now. CFSB2 is forecast. We're going to stay at Enso Neutral as well through uh, this summer. So, of course, if we have an El Nino, we'd need to go to half a degree or more above average over five trimester periods. If we just have a La Nina, we'd have to go to half a degree or more below uh, average over five trimonthly periods. The black dash line showing that, again, we are uh, hovering very close to this zero line, actually, which is a bang on Enso Neutral. We're expecting this to be an Enso Neutral summer. Possibly, or probably on the positive side of the neutral, if anything, but not getting anywhere near uh, the kind of level that uh, we need to get to for an El Nino. And if the prediction is right, it looks like we keep uh, Enso Neutral going right way through into the winter 25-26. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. That will be <laughs> much more important later on in the year. Now, we've had a bit of a job uh, with this, or Shrine House trying to work out uh, the years for us. But uh, we've gone for, Shrine's gone for, and we've gone for um, um, so Summers that are around ain't so neutral, but on the weekly positive side, but again, not getting anywhere near El Nino. So there's a lot of them. <laughs> so let's crack on. We're going to start off with 1960. And this one, the trough of low over Ante, the east of country, winds coming in from the north. By the way, I'm doing this um, video at 9pm on the 10th of May, 2025. I've had an eight-hour shift uh, with my second job. <laughs> I had a bit of tea, and now I'm on to this. So, uh, if it all gets a bit frazzled, if it all gets a bit fraught, then uh, that's the reason why. Working gap with two jobs. I don't know. <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. Ching. Um, anyway, so sorry, I'm off on a tangent. Uh, 1960, unsettled summer. Well, it's 1960 summer, so of course it's got to be unsettled, hasn't it? Starting off a decade with a very poor summer. Then we get 1961. This one looks quite zonal. Low pressure of the north, high pressure of the south. That's a pretty uh, zonal summer in 1961. And 1962 looks like that plating the trough over Scandinavia, a ridge out in the Atlantic. That's a cold summer. Maximum temperature in that summer, I think, is in September, and it's only about 27 degrees. Very, very poor 
um, summer in terms of temperatures. I don't think it's overly wet. There were quite a few dull, wet days. But I think the main thing about that summer is that it's a cold summer, a very cool summer, uh, leading up to, of course, but judgy. But more about that later on in the year. Uh, right, OK, go through the 1966 uh, next. This one, also a mixed summer with a trough of low again to the east and ridges out into the West. It's World Cup summer, of course. But sun shone when England won the World Cup in 1966. But otherwise, it was a very poor summer in a very wet year. <coughs> So sorry, everyone. It will be a video about a car. 1967 has a low pressure to the north, high pressure ridging in from off Atlantic. Rather a zonal summer, uh, really, with that to own. Quite a few uh, westerly winds. I think for a, for a 960 summer, it's a slightly warmer one, but still very mixed and not much to get excited about. Uh, then 1968 shows up next with high pressure to the north, low pressure south. This is quite interesting because it brings a lot of the wet weather into the south. Actually, the north of Scotland gets quite a dry summer, I think, in 68, whereas the south tends to be. Uh, quite a lot wetter. 1969, probably the best summer of the 1960s. There's lots of high pressure uh, in the north and the west of Europe. It's not much to get excited about for a modern summer in the era we're in. We wouldn't really uh, think much about a summer like 1969. But back in the 60s, it was the best summer of the decade with a lot of dry and warm weather. Bit of a gap then to 1966. Do-do-do! Do, 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 do. We've got the daddy with high pressure centre right over top of the UK and Ireland. So, uh, yes, we see a long, hot summer in 1976 there. Um, then we go through to 1977, uh, which is uh, relatively dry-ish, but also very unsettled uh, summer with high pressure out in the Atlantic. Low pressure is down to the south, and winds are coming in from that uh, easterly direction. That's m uh, a more mixed summer in the south, but drier up in the north. We've got 1979 showing up next with high pressure out in the Atlantic, low pressure to the north, winds coming in from a westerly direction. So uh, that's pretty uh, mixed summer, quite a poor summer in 1979. And then 1980 uh, looks like that with a deep trough of low over and to the east of the country, high pressure up here. That's a very poor cool and wet summer in 1980 we go oh i've got another hot summer 1983 showing up next with high pressure right over top of the country mostly dry sunny and hot with uh, that one very hot in july for a long time july 1983 was the hottest july and the hottest month on CT record, it was eventually superseded by uh, 2006. But uh, again, we see a very hot uh, month. And our first 19 Celsius CT month, I think, in 1983. 1986 is a mix, so the analog doesn't tell you all that much about it, to be honest. So it has some higher pressure up to the north and out in the Atlantic. Otherwise, it's a relatively uh, mixed summer. So it starts off quite a bit of high pressure in June, but dry and warm weather. By August, though, it's turning cool or even quite cold and wet. Another hot summer for 1990. Real mixed bag bees uh, and logs, aren't they? So this one with high pressure to the south, low pressure away to the north. Bit dodgy in June. Gets uh, impressively hot, though, through July and August. August, and then we're on to 1993 with high pressure out in the Atlantic, low pressures away to the east, winds coming in from a northwesterly direction. So, uh, that's quite warm early on in the summer, a bit of a front load this summer, it has a lot of dry and warm weather in May and June. Cold front drops south on the 8th of July, and the rest of the summer is a bit of a write off. <laughs> uh, we've got 1994, which is quite an unsettled summer, has high pressure. To uh, the east, but deep low pressure out in the Atlantic. A lot of southerly winds. and has a very hot, but also quite thundery July in uh, 94. 2003 is a really hot summer with high pressure over and to the east of the country. Low pressure out to the west. Bring up those winds from that southerly direction. Of course, it all culminates in a tremendous heat wave through the first half of August 2003, where we achieve 38 degrees, 100 Fahrenheit. 
Uh, our next uh, neutral weekly positive entry so, entry so summer is 2009. This is the famous barbecue summer from the UK Met, of course. Rather mixed uh, with that to them. It wasn't the barbecue summer they predicted. It was actually quite a mixed summer. But it was uh, one spell of pretty quite hot weather late in June. 2012 is a write-off <laughs> with a big blocking area of high pressure around green and ice and low pressure is underneath it. And winds are coming in from an east or a north east direction. That is a, a very wet summer. Not quite as bad as 2007, but certainly a very wet summer and a very cool summer as well. And then we got 2014 with uh, high pressure to the north and low pressure to the south. Winds are coming in uh, from the east. So that's a really bizarre summer. Has a hot, to, well, very warm July with 17 Celsius CET and then a very cool August with a, uh, with a 14 Celsius CET. So a uh, really strange summer. 2014. 2017 is a classic front loaded summer. High pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. Very dry and quite hot at times. In June of 2017, gradually start to wobble. In July, turns cool and wet into August. And then we've got a classic hot summer again for 2018 with uh, lots of high pressure. In from the Atlantic, so of course that has a tremendously hot July, ferociously hot. It does turn a little bit cooler briefly uh, in uh, August, but overall that's a long, hot summer. And then finally we've got 2019 with high pressure over and to the east of the country, low pressure out to the west. We bring up a lot of southerly winds in that particular summer. Lots of plumes going on, plumetastic sort of summer, and uh, and a bit of everything. So at one point, I think, yeah, we get to about 38, 39 degrees. Uh, and then two or three days later, it's about 14 degrees and pour, pouring with rain and feeling really quite cold. So a bit of everything in the summer of 2019. But overall, it is another pretty hot summer, if rather volatile. Right, let's put it all back together then. So this is how all June combined are looking uh, following neutral to weekly positive uh, end so conditions in the summer. That's a bit of a ridge over to the east of the country, but a big low around green and Iceland. Could go either way, really, but I suppose overall probably favouring uh, drier and warmer outcome. July doesn't look too bad either, with a fair amount of high pressure close to the country. Bear in mind, it's such a big range of years, so we will have a lot of uh, deviations uh, going on to this. Uh, and then uh, August looking like that. So maybe August, the most unsettled, high pressure then out towards Iceland, with low pressure to the south of the east. The winds tended to be in from that east sea direction. It's still going to be quite warm though, but perhaps uh, rather wet and rather volatile, especially so down in the south. And then all summers combined with uh, neutral to weekly positive um, and so conditions look like that with the uh, high pressure generally quite close to the country. Lower pressure is down to the south. So a bit of a mixed bag, but I think overall we probably do see, and this is what we've seen throughout this season of uh, summer updates, I think what is what we'll be toying with when we come to do the summer forecast, actually. So we have a lot of unsettled years within the mix, as you expect with such a wide range. But again, perhaps more than you'd expect in a, in a normal uh, summer update in terms of hot summer. So we've got uh, the daddy, the daddy, 1976. We have got 1983. We've got 1990. 1994 is a pretty hot summer as well. And, you know, on it goes. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, but I think overall we probably do end up favouring uh, quite a lot of the, of the dry and quite hot weather with uh, with these years. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how it all comes out, I think, when we come to do uh, the summer forecast, which, of course, we're releasing on Sunday, the 1st of June. We've only got a couple more updates to do after this one, and then uh, it's decision time for Gap. So it'll be interesting to see which way it goes. Okay, we're done. Thank you so much to uh, Ricardo, Richard Traw, for uh, the uh, summer updates and gift. Thank you so much, Rich. Of course, you're going to see a summer forecast gift in a couple of weeks. Can't wait to see that. And thank you, Shadow Shrian, as well, for getting most years together for us. I know Shrian had a bit of a headache trying to work out, you know, something that will work for this uh, ENSO update. So thank you, Shadow Shrian. And thank you, Shadow Richard. Hashtag team 
yeah. Right, well, I'm just about, I'll be last legs. <laughs> so I'm going to stop this. I've got a 6 a.m. forecast to do. I bet I'm going to go and have a sleep, if that's all right. Um, but uh, I'll be uh, I'll be nice and refreshed in the morning when you're watching uh, this video anyway. i uh, got another summer, uh, summer update to do uh, next week. So same time, same place. I'll have more summer data. And don't forget, there's a 10 to 14 day coming up for you later on today as well. Oh, and by the way, we're not live tonight. So if you've got any questions about this summer update, hold fire until Wednesday and then on Wednesday's live stream, that is when you'll be able to, uh, you know, ask any questions that you might have about this one. Right, we'll end it there, Ben, for the ninth summer 2025 update from Gauss. Where is that all for now? And thanks so much.